All right, what's going on, everybody? Another episode of The Art and the Artist. I am here today with Corey Schnitzer. Thank you so much for joining bro, me, brother. Thank you for coming yeah, through. Man. Thanks for the opportunity and following yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really and, nice to be here and uh, yeah. share this with you. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it's funny. I met Corey at, at an art show. It was like a live uh, painting competition. Uh, it was a Peace Unique show. Shout out Peace Unique. Shout out Peace Unique. Yeah, and I was there with uh, actually a, an artist, Jay Griffin from Florida. She was in the show. Shout out Jay Griffin. Um, but yeah, we I got to talk to Corey, and you know, here we are today. So, yeah, it's funny. I I don't even know if when we met at the show, like you knew that I was one of the painters there painting. We just sort of kind of started. Yeah, just, yeah. Just like shooting the shit <laughs> yeah. to the side, you know, like Before talking. Yeah. yeah, like sharing, you know, uh, similar experiences or yeah. living in LA and yeah. stuff. And uh, I was like, well, actually, let me let me show you my painting over yeah, here. And yeah, you, started, yeah, right? you started chopping it up because you're like, oh no, I'm here for the art show. Yeah, so, yeah, man. So it's just kind of funny how that all worked out. Yeah, yeah, but, um, yeah. Gracious for you to follow up with me and want to oh, do yeah. this interview. Oh, absolutely, man. Got on your channel and started kind of thank watching you. some of them. So thank it's, you. Thank it's cool you. to be be here in the hot seat with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you know what? I uh, I mean, I love all my artists from everywhere, but it's SoCal artists, you know that you know means a little something, you know. There you we know, go. To my heart, you know. Yeah. So uh, so all right, man. Let's get right to it then. So. I I'm, I'm from Southern California. Yes. Yeah. So um, born, born and bred, grew up in South Orange County, kind of okay. like Dana Point, Laguna Niguel oh, area. Oh, nice, nice area. I was born in Upland. That's where uh, okay. like my mom and, and that side of the family's from. Okay. Um, but yeah, I grew up uh, South County, South County okay. kid. Nice, nice, man. Okay, so what brought you out here to- uh, Out to LA? To LA. Um, I, I moved out to LA. Uh, with my wife, uh, just at like the end of the pandemic, I needed oh, okay. I needed to switch it up. I wanted to to try to kind of cle- keep climbing, you know, my own career path in the art world yeah. and and pursuing my art. Um, I was leaving behind like ten or twelve years in San Diego, yeah. where I, oh. I felt fairly established and I was I was doing my thing down there, but yeah. just kind of was eager to to do more. Sure. Yeah. So so okay. yeah, that, that was kind of the main reason. Yeah. All right, so you went from like little Laguna and Gale, Dana Point to San Diego. I yeah, mean, I went. I moved, I moved down to San Diego. To San Diego, I got into college down there. Um, oh, okay. After graduating, where'd then, you go? Uh, San, San Diego State. Yeah. Aztecs. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Aztec man. basketball. All right, awesome, yeah. man. Yeah. Dope, yeah. man. That's super dope. Yeah. My my uh, little cousin went to San Diego State. Oh, actually. cool. Yeah. There man. you go. Okay. All right. So. Were you always this artistic person growing up? Were you like, always drawing? Or? Growing up, um, I feel like I had inclinations to be artistic. Okay. Like I, I, I always had the, the coloring pencils or the crayons sure. and stuff. I do remember my parents like went on a date or, or out of town or something. They left us with our, our babysitter. Okay. And they were, I think, redoing the house or something was wrong with the carpet. Yeah. So the carpets were getting getting ripped up, you know, uh-huh. the next weekend. And they gave the babysitter like just a bunch of markers and yeah. Sharpies and, and mm-hmm. everything and just said, go ham, like do whatever oh, you no want. Oh, okay. Yeah, the babysitter was actually like a pretty good artist. Oh, okay. And so she was, she was doing like some like, you know, like Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck kind of sure. like just characters. And I don't know, I think I was very like, influenced by that okay. that mark of permanence yeah sort of, sure. and just like knowing like oh this, this it's not okay because it's like on the carpet yeah you know i didn't know that the, everything was getting ripped up, it up. Uh, yeah. two days later but uh-huh. I remember having like a a ball doing that as a as a kid and didn't really remember that until recently okay yeah. um that kind of that kind of like resurfaced um but my mom was always very artistic mm-hmm. yeah so as a kid, I think I kind of always took notes from her, mm-hmm. just like w- was watching, you know, like okay. observing her. And I can talk more about that in a bit. Um, and then my my Mima, yeah. like my grandmother, mm-hmm. she was a uh, fantastic painter. Oh, okay. Yeah, mostly wow. like oils. And I remember growing up and every time we'd go to their house, she'd, she'd have a wall with all of her paintings. Oh, wow, that's a- And yeah, it was really inspiring stuff. But as we all grew up, she, she did portraits of each of the, oh. the kids, like my cousins, oh, so cool. yeah, yeah. My, and like some of like my dad, you know, when he was sure. a little boy and stuff, and my grandfather, so. And then just other, you know, kind of um, figures or people that I, I remember as a kid looking at those paintings and just kind of getting like lost in them. And, yeah. And, and feeling something, you yeah, know, but yeah. at, at, like at a very young age, uh-huh. it, you know, without influence from mm-hmm. from being an adult, I guess. Sure. And, yeah. yeah, it just kind of always always had something there, but uh, I didn't really start my personal practice of okay. painting until 
I was in college. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty incredible, man. Yeah. I mean, with the amount of work that you have, I mean, the, the pieces and all of the mural work, well, thank that's, you. Thank that's you. a pretty, uh, you. yeah, yeah. <laughs> quick I, uh, rise. It's, yeah, it's, it's kind of my itch now. Yeah. yeah I like to, to move to move uh -huh. some paint. Yeah, yeah, man. Oh, I mean, absolutely. I mean, you guys got to check out the Instagram. So Thank much you. good stuff there, guys. Thank you. Oh, I had a question about your grandmother. Was she a a full-time artist? Was it just something she did, something she knew how to do? So my grandmother is actually a Holocaust survivor. Oh, wow. Yeah, my, my grandfather met her out there during mm -hmm. the World War. Wow. Um, he was a um, American Jew okay. fighting for the U.S. out yeah. there. And she was basically, you know, in distress yeah. fleeing her, her family was pretty much persecuted yeah. out there oh yeah so they met and had the you know the fairy tale sure. love love story and everything wow. and he ended up getting her over here um so he, he took care of her yeah she she lived the the house housewife life i guess yeah you'd say, you okay. know, and, and spoiled my mima and, yeah you know she had a hard life up and up until then um, but yeah, she, I don't think she ever really sold her paintings. Okay. I, I believe she participated maybe in some shows, but it was more of just like a personal practice okay. for her, I think. Yeah. But really, really stunning stuff. Oh, I, yeah. I can probably show you some pieces okay, after, yeah. after this and, yeah. and whatnot. Um, yeah, but seeing that growing up, I mean, that's got to be yeah, inspirational. It, yeah, it really, it really just made me think. And I, I have so many memories, like, and they lived at a few different places, okay. you know, as, as they got older, you know, they yeah. moved out to Palm Desert. And, okay. And stuff but I remember being in different rooms of the different houses and just kind of like looking at the pieces and feeling like I almost was like sucked into that you know yeah, there was like yeah. one of like a, a rabbi that was just his his presence was like so prominent yeah and then there was one of a gentleman and he had like a big turban yeah on it she liked to paint kind of people from all different yeah. backgrounds that's cool yeah. and uh, just just very like captivating by the eyes just looking at the eyes and Something with, with paintings that have eyes, I feel like if you if you look at a piece and it has eyes, and if those eyes can follow you yeah. as you like move uh, from different parts yeah. of the room, or if you look at the painting from different angles or in different lighting, like there's something there yeah. when there's that, you oh, know, yeah. that light. No, you're yeah, absolutely right. And, and that, that, that really kind of gets me ticking. That's so um, yeah, a lot of, there, there was another piece she did of, uh, it was like a couple and they were, you know, it was kind of just like a romantic, like uh, evening kind of scape. Okay. But, but maybe there's like a shard or two of like um, uh, grass or something in the forefront. Okay. So it gave you that element of pers pers perspective. Okay. And then, you know, the couple here, so you feel the love and then the beautiful sunset. And I was just like, as a kid, just yeah. like, there's all these different things that I'm trying to like grasp yeah. my my uh -huh. mind around. And I think yeah. I think that definitely had influence. Oh yeah. She, and, she was always like, a, a real pusher of if I like if I drew something oh, real okay. nice or, sure. or colored something for her like you know it'd go right on the fridge yeah. with the magnet like yeah. it was like a badge of honor yeah and, oh, and I think dope, you know as a yeah. kid you're like impressionable oh sure so. yeah and it's you remember all of that the details about the paintings and stuff like that that's mm -hmm. yeah that's and a lot of a lot of my family members cool. uh, she's passed now but yeah. a lot of my family members have the pieces yeah. so as I get to visit them you know you yeah. get to see those pieces and then that's rejoice awesome. yeah, it's, yeah it's cool how like um, every piece of art has its own story sure yeah oh absolutely yeah, yeah. okay oh, well on the topic of family uh huh what did your okay so did you go to school for art for you, art yeah no okay I didn't um, I went to San Diego State to uh, pursue first uh, business okay I, I went to college because I thought that's what you're supposed to do yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I know. You're, supposed to, you're supposed to go to school and <laughs> yep. get a degree and do that. Yeah. You know, looking back, I, I don't know if I would necessarily go to college, not discrediting that. Yeah. I'd probably put my efforts more into like a trade school sure. or something. Yeah. Or I would have gone to San Diego State and pursued artwork. Okay. With yeah. A couple of friends that have done pretty well and they were in the arts okay. program down there. I just didn't know what I what I wanted to do. I was yeah. I was immature back then. Oh, sure. I uh I was just kind of just going with the motion. Yeah. Okay. All right. So then. So business oh yeah, go, go. pivoted to criminal justice, <laughs> which is like, okay. you know, I was like, what am I going to do with that? <laughs> for, for a minute, I thought like, I, I, I'm going to work with kids and do like, yeah. you know, probation or, okay. or work in parole or something. Cause I like helping people yeah. and giving back and, yeah. and whatnot. 
Um, criminal justice. Oh yeah, that's yeah, a huge. Yeah, huge. <laughs> and, and I was having a hard time with all the like math classes, like statistics oh, yeah, and stuff, yeah, and yeah. The, the business. And and I was living the college lifestyle, oh, so yeah. I don't think my head was in my books as much as it should have been. San right? Diego okay. too. Yeah, I mean, that goes without saying. <laughs> so I pivoted to the criminal justice. Yeah, I was really inf infatuated with the classes, though. Okay. It was very engaging yeah. um, material, like about you know socioeconomic stuff and criminal behavior. Oh, yeah. And like crime and punishment and yeah. just like I was actually like interested in my classes and the the professors speaking yeah. and stuff like that so my grades went up and yeah. because I was, yeah, I was interested in it yeah. but not, it had nothing to do with art I, I started painting um, really just like for fun on the side okay I was broke and I needed a uh, a nice present for my mom yeah who I talked about earlier and mm -hmm. she's she's very artistic and I think I got a lot of influence from her as well uh, growing up. Uh, I dragged this big old piece of plywood out of a dumpster yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was like, that will make a amazing canvas. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to be super freaking heavy after yeah. I painted the whole thing with house paint. That's right. But to this day, she still has the piece in her oh, living room. That's dope. Yeah, yeah. We, we've got it framed like real nice now and whatnot. But okay. uh, it turned out awesome. And yeah. I think like when I did that, I was at a point in my life, I, I didn't have any money. Yeah. I wanted to do something really nice for her for the holidays because the holidays sure. like always mean something to her. It's yeah. a special time for her. And I was like, what can I do that's not going to, you know, uh, break the bank but yeah. like show you know yeah, my love and appreciation yeah. and stuff and i really put put my efforts into that piece like with those intentions and mm -hmm. it, it came out like it, yeah. it came out it came out great the piece is titled mother earth okay and it's like a a woman or a, a mother um depicted over a mountainside and okay. then her hair is kind of like blowing yeah. back in a in a really kind of like not tribal, but kind of chunky, okay. flowing look, and that kind of morphs into the sunset. Okay. Below that, there's like you know flowers blossoming, yeah. and then waves curling up and crashing. But but all the elements kind of meet with with colors muting to okay. to one another and flowing, so your yeah. eye can carry from one yeah. spot to the other. I had no idea what I was doing. I was yeah. young and yeah. I was just experimenting. But you know that that's when like the light bulb light yeah. bulb clicked, and okay. I was like, okay. I might have something here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's um, awesome. And then kind of like ran with that. Yeah. Got some attention from friends mm -hmm. and, you know, peers at school mm -hmm. that kind of gassed me up to be like, you, you should keep doing that. Yeah. yeah. Can you do my wall? Yeah. Can you do this or that? And I've tried to be more of a like, yes, man. Okay. In the beginning and sure. just like, just do as much as sure. I could. Yeah. Yeah. Early on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But you know, the more pieces you make, the more notoriety you get, then you get to make, you know, then you get to pick and choose what you want to do. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly. awesome, man. Okay, so, well, I don't want to get off the family yet. I, no, no. One fine. question I want to know is, once you decided to mm -hmm. go full-time, yeah. what did your family say? So you got artistic people in your family. Was it a, uh, a big surprise to them that you wanted to be an artist? No, and, and they never really gave me any like pushback okay oh, it, it right. was always like yeah. encouraging i don't i don't know if, and i don't want to speak for him i don't know if my dad ever really like oh. like uh <laughs> believed 100 sure. percent like like you can do it i think he does now okay. he's like super proud yeah. where i'm at now and yeah. stuff but in the beginning it was kind of always like oh, all right oh that's great but okay. like but he did you're still keeping that restaurant <laughs> job right like everything's going good <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah. you know, that's probably just being a dad yeah, too, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. um, my mom has, has always been like my biggest fan though, for oh, sure. Okay. She She's artistic and and I, I keep bringing it up, but yeah. like growing up when I would do like school projects, uh -huh. my mom would basically like, kind of like push me to yeah. the side <laughs> and like, like do it for yeah. me, you know? Like yeah. I'd have my input and, yeah. that, and so I would just be there kind of taking notes like, what's that? And like, that's rubber cement. It works better than glue. <laughs> and like, we can cut these perfect and they're not going to be peeling up. So yeah. like, I always had like the really nice book report, yeah, yeah. you know, like just like the creased <laughs> edges and stuff. And like, you could tell it was like, yeah. like I, I almost felt like guilty sometimes. Like, well, I did help a lot, yeah. but like, I didn't do that. <laughs> like, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so, a classic Bob move. So I remember learning a lot, a lot from her. Um, she did this project when she was at a graphic design school where they basically redid 
for those of you that don't know, VCRs are tapes. Oh, yeah. Before we had DVDs and stuff like that, uh, they redid the VCR art, kind okay. of like how you'd have album art or CD art oh, or sure. the art now you'd see for an album on Instagram. Yeah. Um, it was for The Wizard of Oz, okay. which is ironically her favorite movie. She probably picked that on oh, purpose. Oh, okay, sure. Um, so I, I saw from you know sketches to mm templates on uh, the drafting paper or tracing sure. paper uh -huh. to then, you know, the version on the cardboard box. It wasn't the real box. It was like oh, okay. the, the rough draft box sure. to practice on to then the final image. Okay. To then the like one printed on like the high end oh, okay. printer yeah. from the hand sketch. So seeing all that, you know, maybe I was in middle school or something okay. when she went back to school to do that, uh, which is just kind of like impressionable that now, and I mean like really now, like in like recent years, yeah. I find myself doing that oh, really? and kind of like Some approaching kind of approaching a project um you know more more project and then task oriented okay. to get to the finish line than just <clears throat> kind of how i used to mm -hmm. just start oh know, okay sure until it's, the wheels fall yeah, off yeah, you know okay. which isn't a bad way to do it yeah, either but that's true, yeah yeah but this way works for you better now mm -hmm. yeah i don't know if i answered your question or if i kind of signed, no no signed you. <laughs> no no yeah you did yeah okay. yeah and then some yeah okay. <laughs> that's awesome man okay all right, so then family's on board, you know, dad more so now that you, you know, had Yeah, I mean, he was, he was always like supportive. I yeah. just, no, I mean, I, I kind of retract on that. He, so he sold women's apparel with my, okay. with my grandfather. Uh -huh. So they always had um, like these really cool clothes yeah. in the garage, like all the samples that they would oh, take because sure. they used to do trade shows okay. and stuff like that. A couple of them had like these really cool like island prints, almost okay. like you know nicer Hawaiian shirts yeah. or like you know Bali tapestry kind okay. of kind of stuff. And I think I was influenced from a lot of those oh, those cool. colors and stuff. He yeah. he always pushed to get my art into some of those you know higher end like resort shops they were in and okay. um, the stuff by the beach. But I was too immature back oh, then. Sure. You know, he when he was okay. still doing all that, I was still young and. Yeah. Kind of more, I guess, party focused. Oh, yeah. Just not in yeah. the business mindset of mm -hmm. it all that I, I might have missed on some opportunities oh, or just not have yeah. pursued yeah. it as much. But yeah, he's on board now. He, like, I can't take a call with him without him being like, so what are you working yeah. on? What's, yeah. the, what's the project? That's awesome, man. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's good cool. to have that family support. Both know? the not parents are on board. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. And they would always like, when I used to do a lot more art shows, they'd always like roll through. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. If I'd let them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I was like, I don't know if I want Not you guys rolling one. through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I get it. Yeah. No offense, mom and dad. Love you guys. <laughs> he clearly loves you guys. Yes. <laughs> that's awesome, man. Okay. So I was reading on your website, mm -hmm. in the about section that you were uh, influenced by graffiti, like street art. Totally. Okay. So how did... How did that influence you? And maybe just seeing it, you know, a young kid, seeing it for the first for time. Sure. Or even older now that you see some pieces. How did that kind of inspire you to want to do that? Because I want to talk about the murals later, but you got some incredible murals. Man. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. In regards to graffiti, graffiti is always something that I've been interested in. Yeah. And I don't know if... It, it goes back to like kind of that story I was telling earlier about the carpet and oh, like, sure. you know, drawing on there like, yeah. oh, you're not supposed to draw on the yeah. walls like that, that rebellious aspect of yeah. it, you yeah. know? And I think I kind of was like a stinker as a kid. Yeah. But I, I just remember like being on trips as a kid in, a, in, a, in the car or like on the train or wherever I was going mm -hmm. and graffiti being like a constant, yeah. like not, yeah. you don't see it everywhere, but you might yeah. see where you start your trip and then like, you know, you go through a, a zone where you don't yeah. and then you see it again yeah. in like the next city over. Uh -huh. And then as you get, you get older, you might realize like, oh, like that's the same name that I saw, you know, back there yeah. like that. Oh, maybe that's the same person. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then just the colors and then the artistry of, cool. whoa, that's pretty crazy that someone can, yeah. you know, articulate that uh -huh. and go get that there in that public spot. Yeah. And one, it's illegal, you know, two, you need the skill. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. So yeah, it's just something I've always been kind of drawn to. I, I grew up skateboarding. Sure. I think a lot of the skate parks would always get hit up with, yeah, with graffiti. Yeah. Um, and then as I, as I got older, it was something that I kind of not so much graffiti, but more more so like spray painting sure. uh, yeah. that I've been uh -huh. been really drawn to and using mm -hmm. as a medium. Uh, but yeah, just just something I really like, and yeah. and yeah. I like um, I like the the characters in graffiti because yeah. I think they they kind of tell a story and can give a, a piece just so much like 
more more flavor mm-hmm. than, than just the letters but yeah as i've as i have like divin and dove into graffiti i've noticed you know like letter form is a complete art form oh, in yeah. itself you oh, know yeah. just how you can get the letters to lean uh-huh. or bigger or chunkier or smaller yeah. or, you know and then back to to kind of pivot like um like sign painting okay oh sure yeah, yeah and, okay. like, and letter yeah. form and stuff like yeah. that uh-huh. is a form of art in itself oh yeah and if you kind of dissect those you can see the same word uh-huh. in you know a typeface that's bold versus yeah. something that's real like you know skinny and, and uh-huh. slanted and both the words have you know yeah. such a drastic different yeah, feel you're right. absolutely yeah just by the visual aspect of it mm-hmm. yeah the, yeah you're, you're absolutely right have you ever taken all right there's this tour downtown right i grew up downtown Lots of great graffiti art. There's so much good graffiti art. Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. And yeah, not to get off that topic, but like yeah. LA is, I think, like the Mecca. You know, there's there's sure. New York, yeah. and then there's LA, oh, yeah. and then there's everything else. And, uh-huh. you know, people could argue about whatever they yeah. want, but I think those are kind of the two, two yeah. biggest hubs. I agree. So yeah. being out here, you know, every time you get on the freeway, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm inspired yeah. just seeing like all the colors and the, the art. Uh-huh. I love like getting on the freeway like on a Monday because yeah. I feel like everyone goes out Saturday and Sunday yeah. night and yeah. like, hit, hits it hard and yeah. you just get to see new stuff and it's it's just to me it's inspiring because the big like bold pieces uh-huh. are like someone went out there and put in some work Seriously. you know what I mean yeah. like you're uh-huh. not just like and yeah. out like no, it's no. it's not a tag yeah there's yeah. there's some there's some missions to it uh-huh. um, so it's cool I, got, I just have a lot of respect for, yeah, for yeah. that uh, that field and the people that I've been lucky enough to meet in that um, have been really nice to yeah. me and kind of encouraging. So yeah. that's awesome. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I took this tour downtown um, maybe two, three years ago, something like that. And a lot of these pieces I'd seen. Some of them are new; they've been covered up, things like that. But um, this was like a graffiti tour yeah, through downtown. Through downtown, yes, because cool. I wanted to learn about the artists. You know, mm-hmm. they they. Um, he was telling some of the great stories about some of the legendary artists that were downtown from like the 80s, you yeah. know, when people first started moving there in the 70s. Um, but uh, some legendary LA graffiti artist was giving my tour, you know, and it, oh, sick. oh yeah, it turned out fucking fantastic. So, I mean, if you're, if you're ever, I think they're still doing it, but you should definitely check that yeah, out. I will. Yeah, yeah I was, are. I was fortunate enough to catch the, uh, the Chop them Down uh-huh. okay, uh, sure. show, the yeah. Demirius Gallery, it was like a couple months back. And I was just enamored yeah. with the display. I think it was like a decade of uh-huh. um, stuff that that they had put together from all the content oh, they filmed over cool. the last de- decade. Yeah, and just um, you know the display of work there was fabulous. Uh-huh. They had a big graffiti installation oh, um, right. in yeah. the back that was done, um, and then just at the end of the night, everyone started getting loose when yeah. they uh, dropped the lights and just. The, the the cans came out, the markers oh, came out, and the, the whole gallery got hit up, yeah. floor to ceiling. Wow. It was the, like the biggest public act of vandalism yeah. I've ever <laughs> seen in my entire life, face to face. You know, and yeah. like I I was just grateful to be there. That, that is, I almost awesome. didn't go to the show because yeah. like I didn't have anyone to go with. I was like, I don't know if I should roll solo sure. or this or that, and. I went. I'm so happy I went. Oh, that's dope. So, yeah, yeah, that it was, it was really, really great event. Dope special, experience. Special night. That's awesome, man. Okay, so when you start to maybe not get serious, but mm-hmm. start painting a lot more. You yes. Know, after that first piece, uh, were you working on you know, like pieces like this? You know, the ones that you could hang up, or were you already thinking about? All right, I want to go do some murals right now. I want to do some really, really big pieces. It's weird. I actually did a mural shortly after that first piece I did for my mom. Okay. I, when I was in San Diego State, I was in a fraternity. Okay. And then Sigma Chi. And we threw a party every summer called Reggae Sunsplash. Okay. And it was like the best party yeah. in San Diego State. Um, they filled the parking lot with sand and wow. basically like built like a whole little island oasis. Okay. And it was like Jamaica in San Diego. You know? Okay, yeah, yeah, that's dope. So yeah. somehow I got volunteered to paint the entire side of the building, the fraternity house. Okay. Um, I'd never done a mural. Yeah, oh, really? But like we had, we had the, the paint, yeah. and I, you know, maybe I had some liquid courage, sure. or I was feeling good. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I 
I can do this, uh -huh. let's go. <laughs> we got the ladders, the yeah. whole nine. I don't think I really knew like what I was in for until I got okay. on that ladder and got up to like the second story. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, this is like a good idea. <laughs> down there and we were talking about it. Yeah. Uh <laughs> but long story short, not my best work, but I'm still proud of it. Yeah. I, I did this. It was supposed to be like Bob Marley. It definitely doesn't look like okay. Bob Marley. <laughs> but like a, a Rastafarian figure. Sure. Just smoking the fattest doobie. Yeah, man. And then kind of similar to that Mother Earth piece, just, okay. just flows across the whole wall. The smoke's yeah. going up. And then I think someone's going down that's turning into waves or some palms in there or something. Uh -huh. But But the side of his face is like, you know, the first story into the second story. Okay. And then the dreads. We're all flowing back, and those were going oh, sure, up into yeah. a uh, like man-made water slide. We oh, okay. Oh, so tough. it looked incredible, yeah. you know. And then yeah. everyone from the schools there partying in front of it. Yeah. So it was a win. Okay. Yeah. So absolutely. Boom. There again. Yeah. Got the itch. I was yeah. like, I need. I want to do that again. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't really have a whole lot of murals, though. I'd say um, until later on. Okay. I did a couple more in that fraternity house for guys' rooms. Okay. But you know those rooms got painted oh, sure. every semester, yeah. every yeah. year, because yeah. stuff was getting tore up. Um, kind of moved into the canvas pieces. Okay. Just getting canvases and doing live art shows, actually. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. All right, so how long into it before you start, I don't know, maybe really making some sales, like really making a name for yourself? Mm -hmm. Was it after you know a lot of canvas pieces was it um maybe doing these live shows and, and people recognizing who you are and, and and your work was there ever a point in time when you figured okay like now this is getting serious you know the, the business is picking up people know who i am i'm getting better uh yeah, yeah. now it's you know it, everything is looking up i um i did an art show with my buddy Rob Tula. Okay. We like, we threw it together. It was called Oh My Gatos. Okay. It was in San Diego. It was just like a little pop up. And I remember having uh, a good turnout there. We, we promoted the hell out of it yeah. to get a lot of people to roll through. And didn't sell anything. Okay. Um, and whoever else was doing the shows there didn't sell anything. Um, but it was, it was just a good turnout. And yeah. I got a lot of good, uh, you know, feedback and eyes yeah. on it, people taking pictures yeah. and whatnot. And it it kind of got me pumped up to do more. Yeah. So kind of in that same timeline, uh, my buddy Benji was working uh, in, in promotions in okay. San Diego. And he was basically running like party buses down to oh, the hottest yeah. nightclubs in the sure. gas lamp. Yeah. I was working in the gas lamp industry at the same time, like bartending and serving okay, and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. And then always just painting on the side. It was like okay. my side gig. We go to the club one night and I see um, a young lady upstairs painting on mm -hmm. the roof. Okay. And like the clubs, you know, pop and there's some great talent down there. It's a few story venue yeah. uh, called Stingery. I, I didn't really care about the club. I was yeah. just like, that's so cool that she's there painting. Yeah. There's people here. And yeah. I was, you know, drawn into that. So I asked Benji, I said, hey, what does one have to do, yeah. you know, to do that? Uh -huh. um, and he's like, well, let me find out. Yeah. So I don't know, like a month later, he's like, hey, uh, they're figuring out Halloween weekend. Okay. Do you want to, do you want the live art spot on the yeah. roof? And oh, I was I like, don't. let's yeah. go. Yeah, let's go. Uh -huh. I get to be that person. Yeah. Okay. So I put my nose down and I painted my ass off for that month. Uh -huh. Um, all sorts of stuff, mostly like mostly small pieces. Okay, I wasn't really working big yet. Yeah, um, I sold one piece for fifty bucks. Okay, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's fifty bucks you didn't have. Fifty I mean. bucks I didn't have, and I was it, for me like uh, you know where I was in the night and stuff. I was just like, I want you to have it. Yeah, he was stoked on it, and I was stoked to make a sale. Yeah. It, it was a win in my book. Was um, that your first sale? And I think that was my first sale. Okay. Yeah. 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 So that, awesome. that he was down to do that. I probably could have even got more because it was kind of like a swanky yeah. spot, but it just felt right. Yeah. I remember the piece too. It was very like, like washed out background. Um, and then 
I had an eagle like perched in on the okay. front, like kind of looking real tough. It was sort of like tattoo flashy okay. looking kind of. Sure. And I think if memory serves me correct, I did the outline in like one of those deco art paint markers okay. in in the purple. So okay. it was like a purple yeah, okay. outline yeah. with drips. I don't know why I can remember all that. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm kind of like saying. erotic <laughs> in my head when it comes to like colors and art sure. and, and all that stuff. Uh -huh. Oh, that's so awesome. Did that and then that just hit like a hundred miles per hour yeah because okay. i started doing those art shows not at not at at first but throughout a few years mm -hmm. i eventually became like a resident artist oh, there oh, yeah and i was doing the shows probably like twice a month okay all right oh that's awesome and then that really okay really kind of um helped my career blossom okay did that lead into more sales staying you know the resident artist let, this led into more sales it was a great platform because if I was doing the show there, mm -hmm. I could display whatever I had oh, sure. you know, on deck. Yeah. And then I'm there mingling to meet people. Yeah. Live paint. Mm -hmm. And, you know, can kind of pitch people like, hey, you know, I could do something for your home. Yeah. I could do something for your business. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people that were in that mix were kind of just party people. Sure. So it is a yeah. lot of talkers. Oh, yeah. But I was young and it was great because it was a lot of exposure. Yeah. And then the club had this idea, my buddy Michael McShane and uh, Dan Krieg, I'd say were real responsible for, for this, mm -hmm. of uh, let's do some celebrity portraits okay. of the talent that's coming to the club. Oh, okay, sure. And then we'd get the, the talent to autograph the painting yeah. with like a fat paint marker. Uh, dope, yeah. Uh -huh. And then we could gift them to okay. you know, the bottle service clients yeah. or sell them to you know, some of the high rollers. Yeah, yeah. So the, the club did that whole song and dance for a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Um, I was always like a happy contender because mm. they were they were never like that, you know, financially lucrative for me. Okay. But if this was like pre Instagram. Oh, sure. You know, like MySpace yeah. was done, so like yeah. Facebook was like the thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. So like you could get a cool shot with whatever celebrity had just come yeah. come down yeah. playing. And I have a piece of art that I did for them uh -huh. or, or with them, and so, it, so you did the you did the paintings live while they were there performing. Or are you have them before? Sometimes I would do them live. Uh -huh. um, most of the time, I'd have them pretty buttoned up and okay. kind of just finish them sure. there, and then yeah. let the artist sign them. Yeah, because yeah. it's it's kind of chaotic in a yeah. nightclub. Yeah, when I was doing like like sure. the just the live painting, live painting stuff, mm -hmm. not so much the celebrity autograph portraits. Uh -huh. Uh, I would almost have an area like carved out, like yeah. on my own table or, okay. or a nook or something, sure, yeah. so I could have the stuff on display, yeah. so that it's not getting knocked over and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. But yeah, I had, I had a lot of opportunity with that, and the the owner of that nightclub, uh, James Brennan, is a huge philanthropist. Okay. So he started throwing um, some of his own like uh, you know private charity events, okay. where he invited me to come do a piece, and that's where I got to meet a lot of you yeah. know celebrities and do oh, pieces sure. for them too yeah which yeah was, which was great and then they'd auction those off and those were the ones that really went for like high dollar okay awesome that's awesome cool. okay so this I, i'm gonna have to talk about it now and then just talk about the celebrity portraits yeah so it was that at that at that particular spot that you had the uh the mob d yes sign wow that's and so you guys check his Instagram, all right? Sign by Prodigy Sign. Prodigy. And, well, and actually, Havoc. Havoc signed it too, yeah. Oh, that's yeah, yeah. awesome, man. Prodigy was, to this day, one of the like nicest and most like uh -huh. humble wow. guys I'd say I've, I've met. Yeah. Um, out of, out of the, the celebrities I've I met there, he was, he was just so cool and like he yeah. talked to me like, like how you and I are. Sure, yeah. Um, that, that art show was actually they they were doing like a whole like biggie night there because okay. it was on the anniversary of uh his death okay. march 26th mm -hmm. i think a lot of people cel celebrate that sure. you know big big day in the hip-hop community um so they were there and i had a section where i had some biggie art on display i had like yeah. three pieces okay. on display sold all three of those no. so that that was a yeah, win man. you know that was Absolutely. a win the, yeah. not all the live art shows were losing <laughs> yeah. that was a win uh -huh. um but he he loved the the havoc and yeah. uh prodigy um mob deep piece i did for him or them uh, my buddy jack stricker shout out jack he actually helped me out with that okay. he, he helped me get those faces real buttery looking yeah. because he was a little little further in his career at the time so i appreciate you bro <laughs> um 
but it's such a nice nice guy they yeah. autographed him and then he he wanted to see all my paintings and asked oh, me if i'd walk him through yeah. before the club opened and wow and t kind of talked to him about stuff yeah and, yeah and we really got to just you know shoot the shit and, and share a moment there and yeah it was really cool that's awesome man. you know rest in peace now yeah like, yeah super uh, grateful to yeah. have that experience absolutely Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. There were some other ones too I saw on your Instagram. There's a YG one. YG, yeah. We did that one. That one wasn't at that same club. That oh, okay. was uh, at the Ivy in, in San Diego. Oh, okay. And he was performing. Um, I think we I did a couple actually with, with YG. Mm. Yeah. Um, I want to say Fab. Okay. Oh, crazy man. Him. I got a crazy story about uh, LMFAO. Oh, okay. We did, did, we did. We did one with them, and that was during that like party rock era yeah, or whatever. Man. And when dude, you could, we went so hard that night. Yeah. Like I remember, maybe one of the, the hardest nights I've ever partied, like in a nightclub. Yeah. Yeah. And just <laughs> those guys have so much energy. Yeah. Yeah, man. But I, I, I left the club and I'm doing my new, normal routine, trying to like pack, pack up the gear and uh -huh. whatnot, get, get the stuff together. At the time, I was probably trying to like get on the party bus back home too, and just like leave, okay. leave my car there, like yeah. with the paintings loaded in it, like for safekeeping. It's okay. like the, the safe, like I couldn't drive. Oh, sure. You know? Yeah. So just yeah. Leave the tank there with all the, all the merch and stuff. That's awesome. Get on the bus. My shit got jacked. No yeah. way. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think it was like two chicks in high heels, like grabbed it and really? like ran down the street, like clicking their, their no heels. And there was way. just so much going on. And like the club got out and it was chaos. And I was with my friends. Yeah. And it's like, to this day, I'm kind of bummed about it. But yeah. like even the next day after it happened, I was like super pissed. But then I was like really stoked because I was like, Man, that's cool that someone like wanted that bag uh, to like just straight up that's jack true. it. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, that's true. But yeah. I, but I really wanted that piece because it was it was black and white, and I think I I like put out their logo or LMFAO and like all like chunky like pieces okay. of mirror that yeah. I had like stuck on there. It was like something I was trying at the time. Yeah, and then I had the the one guy Red Foo. I had uh, him tag his in, in red. Okay. and had sky blue. Do yeah. his in blue. <laughs> it just it just was like so yeah, so man. perfect and like the most thought out one. Yeah, but I mean like it kind of goes to show. It's like of course yeah. the one that we like tried to curate the most yeah, just yeah. gets jacked. Gets stolen. Yeah. Of course it does. Yeah, yeah. If, hey, if you're out there, if you have stolen that LMFA or something, <laughs> I'd send it back, all right? Oh, man, yeah, I was in the club in the LMFA era, so yeah, that was a... <laughs> yeah, it was funny. That was a fun time. But God, Jewel, stolen, Jewel was a really sweet lady. Oh, yeah. She, we did a couple oh, with her, so and awesome. she even uh, did a guitar uh -huh. that uh, they auctioned off and raised a lot. Um, trying to think who else. That's crazy. Goo Goo Dolls guy. Yeah, yeah. John Resnick. Uh, oh, sure. He, he was funny. Yeah, he, really? He was, like, uh, he was like, he said something on stage about the painting. He's like, oh, they did this nice portrait of um, Tom Petty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was him. I was like, all right, dude, well played, well played. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Such <laughs> great opportunities to have. And yeah. this is sort of early still in your yeah, own Yeah, I was, I was pretty young. Um, and I was working in the restaurant industry. And yeah. So kind of just beat back in between those two. Sure. And then when I was in the restaurants, I was just schmoozing with people yeah. trying to be like, hey, you know, this is what I do, yeah, yeah. this and that. And that kind of led to its own lane of kind of more so the murals. Sure. But restaurants became a great platform mm. for me to showcase my work for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've seen it, yeah. Uh, yeah. Some of your stuff you have on uh, on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for a lot of artists that are just starting out, I, I would suggest that um, you know get a lot of a lot of wall space that yeah. you know people are open to yeah. hosting things, uh -huh. and then just getting your your mm. stuff in front of eyes always helps. Yeah. So once you started like the first couple of murals, was it just mostly word of mouth that, that just kind of got around? Your name got around, and people started I'd, reaching I'd, out to you. Yeah, I'd say yeah. The 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 nightclub stuff helped. And then I was working at Croce's Jazz Club in, okay. the, in the gas lamp. And it was kind of like an older crowd there. Okay. They had a huge uh, mural of Jim Croce okay. in the back. And I was just kind of inspired by it, I think, because I was always working in that bar, like mm -hmm. running back and forth. And yeah. they had the jazz music going. It was just like a cool, yeah. different yeah. kind of nice vibe. timey vibe. Uh -huh. So I ended up doing a black and white piece of Croce, like my rendition of it. Sure. And Ingrid Croce, the owner, yeah. she kind of knew what I was doing at the nightclubs and yeah. she asked me to throw like an art show at the okay. at her venue nice. to try to do something to, I guess, sway the younger crowd sure. in because there was a, a little hot spot across the street. Okay. Um, 
So I did that and that's kind of when like the murals and the restaurant art and yeah. the live art, they all kind of like fused together. Yeah. Okay. And then I'd say, yeah, more people were yeah. not necessarily trying to commission me to do work mm -hmm. and, and pay for it, yeah. but <laughs> yeah. I was a topic of conversation. Yeah, like people, that's good. people were using my yeah. name and, and calling me and stuff. Yeah, um, that's awesome. And then to backtrack to like your super, super, original question like about LA yeah. like, kind of moved up here because there's a little more opportunity for sure. the arts and yeah and um, just more projects you can kind of sure. get involved with okay would you say that's the main difference between the art scene in San Diego and here in LA it's just just more more galleries more it's just like everyone in San Diego just wants to like trade you no <laughs> I'm like dude like like comp dinners and like free stuff is yeah. like so amazing and I love living yeah. like that like uh -huh. who doesn't of course but like man everyone's got bills it's a lot of work too <laughs> yeah. doing a bill man yeah, yeah. It's not, not, but not no I mean, I've night. been I've been super fortunate I've had some great great clients in San Diego too yeah. um, that's awesome but LA, I think there's just more of it in, yeah. in LA. Oh, yeah. It's more in your face. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like back to the graffiti. You get yeah. on the freeway and like you see sure. some stuff that's up there that wasn't there yesterday. Yeah. And then it's buffed. And then two yeah. days later, there's something new there yeah. and across the street. So it's just like so much activity. And then LA has helped me kind of keep my head down and just be like, all right, well, how much can I get done in this day? Yeah. And yeah. then, you know. Uh huh. Sometimes at the end of the day, I'm like, oh man, like, I really didn't do anything. Yeah. And then I'll look at the piece and I'm like, well, actually, dude, you kind of did. Yeah. Did like yeah. That, that. Oh, you cleaned up that. Uh -huh. You fixed that thing from yesterday. Yeah. And you started that. And yeah. Like, See? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I, I guess just, just focus. Okay. That's mm -hmm. awesome. So, when you're preparing to start a piece. Sorry, I keep cutting uh, you off. Oh, no, go for it. But. I'd say I'm more active in SD than I am in LA. Oh, really? I, I'm I'm becoming more uh -huh. more involved up here and getting more projects up here. But I think just being established down there for so long, oh, like sure. yeah, especially in Gaslamp too. There's because people are gonna go down there to mm -hmm. you know to party, and you're at Jim Croce's mm -hmm. nightclub. I mean, it's yeah. I've been lucky, and I got a. A great mural gig with um, Fit Athletic Club in oh, Little nice. Italy. Sure. And then yeah. that kind of trickled into different uh, mural spots through Little yeah. Italy, too. Okay. So all this happened after I moved to LA. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, you're just like going back to oh, SD. Yeah. Just like, it keeps grabbing me. It's got such uh -huh. a hold on me, but yeah. it's cool. Yeah. I, I love you, San Diego. That's awesome. Yeah, San Diego was good. Yeah. You know, when I um, love the Padres, it's you know, I love the Dodgers too. Yeah, but sure. like, yeah. Ah, it's hard because I grew up, you know, yeah. in South Orange County, yeah. like right in between. Oh, not an Angels fan. I went to Angel games as yeah. kids, but like, oh. I don't, I feel like all my memories of the Angel game were just like being hot and sunburned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like, yeah. I, like yeah. I personally like kind of sucked at baseball. Oh, okay. Yeah. My brother, uh, rock star. Mm -hmm. Like he almost went pro. Mm -hmm. Like, like he could, that kid could play ball. You yeah. Know? Yeah. He's a barber now, but, um. It just it, baseball was never really my thing. Oh, sure. I was more into like the skateboarding, oh, okay, and yeah. the beach, and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I know there's that like Padres Dodgers yeah. kind of rivalry. Yeah, they're getting good. Like, Yo, I see you both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Padres. All of a sudden, man, last yeah. maybe three, four know, years, right? just got a bunch of talent, mm -hmm. man. All right, okay, yeah. awesome stuff, man. All right, let me pivot a little bit because I saw something on your Instagram that was Please. cool as shit, right? So I saw the custom skateboards that you made oh, now are you. you making those in a like with a skateboard shop or with a, a company a skate company or is this something you're just selling you know no so i would like to yeah either eventually you know be involved in a skate co or yeah. start a skate co i have some ideas that kind of brewing but um, those in particular and the other decks that I've done for people, yeah. I basically just get blanks. Oh, okay, sure. You know, yeah. blanks and you can get um, white or black or yeah. just natural wood. Uh -huh. And then I'm effectively using those as yeah. a blank canvas, okay. just how an artist would go to the, you know, Blake yeah. or My Michaels or your local art store and get a uh, raw canvas. And sure. Yeah. Just, just a different canvas and always doing murals and like large scale stuff. Yeah. I, it was kind of hard to, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. and it's like a, a weird shape. It's just like a, yeah. you know, a little, little kind of oval, but you gotta try new things. Yeah, you're right. You know what, you're not the first artist that told me that. I, um, 
I interviewed this artist, uh, Mark Raphael, actually, who makes these big, giant, abstract pieces. And then he made some small ones, and he said, yeah, the small ones are a little bit I more difficult. personally because. like working larger. Yeah. To a degree. Sure. Once you get to a, <laughs> the once past one scope, you're kind of like, oh, wow, this but, is a lot. Yeah. Uh -huh. But yeah, with like details and stuff, you, for me at least, it can be more forgiving because yeah. you have more space mm -hmm. to fill Absolutely. And, and whatnot where it was small it's like stuff has to be so spot yeah. on yeah uh -huh. um i personally work with like a lot of layers okay and a lot of paint so it um a lot of thin layers of paint sure yeah um, okay yeah and with a, a smaller workspace but yeah, the, the skateboards were, were fun um i yeah. did i did uh like a, the the drip ones that yeah. we were talking about yeah the series across and then we got to glaze them all with the with the yeah. gloss it was just kind of a a nice different mm -hmm. art installation project yeah. I've done, but I really want to explore doing more yeah. of those. Yeah, yeah, because well, yeah, those are awesome, man. So I'm passionate about art, I'm yeah. passionate about skateboarding, uh -huh. and it's kind of like a nice fusion yeah. of the two. Yeah, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, uh, and another question, uh, the uh, surfboards. Yes. I saw that you painted. Is that on the same sort of uh, lane there, just oh, yeah. another project you were working on? Yeah, no, so actually, most of those painted surfboards I've done are yeah all for my good friend Josh Ornalis. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I'd say not all of them, but most of them. Yeah, really? Yeah. So <laughs> we, we had, we'd get the, the foam board yeah. and some of them he actually shaped himself. Oh, okay, nice. And then I'll paint the bottom of it. Uh -huh. If you ever want to paint a surfboard, you have to use water-based paint. If you use anything else uh -huh. like paint marker yeah. or anything oil or anything funky, it, it'll eat into the phone. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, yeah okay. So if you're gonna do it, this is before it's glass. You gotta use, you know, real watered down acrylic. At least that worked best for me. Okay. Um, and then he'd, he'd glass them over yeah. after. And yeah. it's just sick, because they're just sealed in. Yeah. It looks so nice. Yeah. And I'd say all that, I was kind of inspired by like, I don't know if you know surfing, but like Lost, the mm -hmm. Surf Co. Like growing up, I feel like their oh. boards just had the coolest like, kind of like graffiti, like, punk thrashy like okay. art on there but yeah. super vibrant colors yeah um so that was definitely oh, yeah definitely an influence yeah those are dope man yeah yeah i like like doing the surfboards those are fun i i like to just kind of step into new yeah. mediums now no oh, absolutely i've been doing the canvases for a long sure. time yeah yeah nice to mix it up yeah and they turned out fantastic well man. thank yeah, you yeah yeah absolutely thank that's you. why i thought man maybe you're working already with a legit comedy with these because I, I don't see why you wouldn't call <laughs> well, it thank that, you right? yeah i mean I, I would like to i would definitely, right. definitely awesome. like to do that okay yeah all right back on your i had a lot of fun going through your instagram man. yeah yeah please right. let's talk so i saw a photo of Chuck Liddell with Leonardo mm. DiCaprio wearing your merch, wearing He's your hat. Right. Yeah, that, yeah, that's insane, yeah, man. Yeah. yeah, I'm scrolling down, I'm like, is that the Iceman? I'm like, what, mm. is, what is happening here? I have a few pictures of Chuck Liddell yeah. from the years, just like flexing or whatever yeah. with my hat on. Uh, one is really sick. He's like wearing a shirt that says Muhammad Ali. Yeah. He's got one of my hats on. Uh, one of my good friends, Chris uh, Corkins, oh. like trains with him, and oh, okay. he's always rocking my merch and stuff. That's and I guess dope. Chuck yeah. liked it, uh -huh. so I was just like, Psh, okay. "Wow, man. lace up the ice man, <laughs> yeah, respect, man. Yeah. yeah." And then he's like cool. wearing it out and about, yeah. and just like, "Cool, that's awesome, yeah. man." Yeah, I've been trying to push the merch hard. It's uh -huh. it's crazy. Like uh, a lot of cool stuff happens with it, and I'm I'm like a firm believer. Like if someone mm. wants to rep my stuff, yeah, like. I'm gonna let you rep it, you yeah. know, or just like lace you up because oh, yeah. if you're that down, like oh. for me, like that's the least I could do. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I've I've got a lot of people wearing my stuff now, which is nice, great man. and flattering, and thank you to everyone that, that supports that. Yeah. One of my good friends from college in San Diego is at a gas station in San Diego okay. in San Diego, and my one of my family members up here is okay. down there like on vacation. Okay. And they are both at the gas stations, no, like no. filling up, no. like, <laughs> like, like wearing my stuff. Yeah. And they're like, you know Corey? Yeah. Oh, you know Corey? Yeah, I'm his uncle. Yeah. Well, I'm one of his best friends, yeah. you know? And, I'm just like, and they're like sending me a selfie yeah, together and stuff. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, that is cool. Like yeah, that is the power cool. of the artwork and the universe bringing my, yeah. my friends and family together via like my little like hats and yeah. logos and stuff. That's so, awesome, man. Yeah. Oh, man. But yeah, thank you Chuck Liddell too yeah. for, for rocking my stuff. That's insane. Yeah, man, I love it. Yeah, the merch is fantastic, guys. I mean, I'm going to put all your websites Thank stuff you. down here. But yeah, the merch is great. Thank you, man. Man, this has been a good interview. All right. Okay, I want to talk more about how you develop your style. Uh, okay. 
the colors, the um, just sort of the method that you go into when you yeah. create. Was it, were you always, you know, well, this one in particular, right? Like very vibrant colors. And I think I read this is part of a series that, mm. that you're working on, a psychedelic series. Kind of, yeah. I, was, I did a couple shows where everything was kind of like, like uh. psychedelic themed and... Um, like uh, some stuff for like some marijuana dispensaries oh, sure. and stuff like okay. that. So these pieces have floated around a little yeah. bit. Um, but yeah, I think your initial question was about like the colors. Yeah. Early color bomb. Like yeah. everything was, was color bombed, yeah. you know, hard, like the brighter, the better. Yeah. And I think I was just very, um, just kind of like, like punched with, the impact you can make with you know mm. putting something that's so bright and vibrant in a space yeah. and how it how it can change the whole oh, yeah. you know mood and and feel um so that was kind of my mo for a while and i, I just painted like bright colorful stuff mm -hmm. now i'm really into still still bright mm -hmm. colors but a little more like muted or Feel pastel more. or just kind of like yeah. I, i'll find a bright color and then i'll try to like you know just just one uh, okay one yeah. hue over with the yeah. tone uh -huh. to kind of just get a it's still bright but it's got a lot more like moodiness to yeah. it it's yeah. kind of where i'm going okay. going now um but yeah my process has pretty much always been acrylic mm -hmm. and then i sort of started to use paint markers because mm -hmm. I found you can really manipulate the nib of it okay. to like, you know, kind of flick out or flare okay. and then you can come back again with brushes mm -hmm. later with the acrylic, you know, to cut in. Mm -hmm. And then as I kind of got good at all that, some of the, the paint markers that I really like all carry uh, mm -hmm. aerosol cans. Oh, sure. Okay. So, you know, it was, it was the type of thing I've always been interested in graffiti. I always liked that. Uh, always kind of wanted to spray paint, but wasn't that good at it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, now I want to start to incorporate that into my pieces. Yeah. And then to go back to the murals, if you're using the cans on a mural opposed to, mm -hmm. a, you know, rolling or brushes, yeah. not for all applications, but in a lot of cases, you're, you can be so much more time efficient. Oh, using you can cans. get a lot more done with the oh, can. Sure. Yeah. You know, if you, if you can do it right. And if it's, you know, uh -huh if it's applicable, like if you're inside a small mm -hmm. space where you're painting something, you can't really okay. do that, but for an outdoor wall or yeah. something, you can. Okay. All right. So would you say now, um, like when you first started using spray, I mean, maybe outside from murals and stuff like that, yeah. was it sort of a learning curve to figure out how to get it precisely? How yeah, to cause, definitely oh, yeah. a learning curve. And uh -huh. like, I, I'd say for a long time, like when I was using it, I was, I was using it more as just like something to accent the piece okay. it, opposed to like oh, sure. using it for, for like a main component. So like uh -huh. I might have used it just to like, just to dust everything, okay. you know, to give it like a yellow glow over everything. Uh -huh. I'm not really using like the, sure. like spraying a design or something, but just kind of like uh -huh. more so for an effect or I, for a long time, I really liked painting all the rails of my canvases. Okay. So I would, you know, masking tape off the tops and then yeah. use the spray can to like spray down the rails, okay. which was like great practice to, you know, oh, you're oh, too close. Okay, you're getting sure. all those drips. Oh, you're too far. It's too dusty. Okay, yeah. So kind of just learning how to, uh -huh. you know, articulate that tool. Okay. And then after I have that as like my primer or base, okay. then go in and paint with brushes okay. over it. Okay. All right. Awesome, man. Yeah. Cause it's, um, mm -hmm. I've heard a lot of painters, like traditional painters, yes. who want to get into the ideas, yeah. right? It's not as easy. <laughs> it's, yeah, really, it's really challenging. Know. So kudos to, to yeah. everyone out there that can really, you know, manipulate a can. It's it's crazy. And as, as you go down the rabbit hole, you'll see there's different cans with different pressures yeah. and then oh, different okay. tips you can put on top sure. to, to help you achieve different results. And uh -huh. uh, if you do your homework, it can be really helpful. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah, but man, like man. anything, I mean, it just comes down to like going out there and yeah. doing it. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. You you just got to try it, man. Okay. I want to uh, kind of backtracking yeah. a little bit, but would you say that the environment that you grew up in mm -hmm. sort of influenced the way that you create, whether it be the colors or subject matter or anything like that? Was it was it a big influence on what you do now? Um, the way you grew. It's up? It's a good question. I grew up, you know, in, in South Orange County. So like going to the beach and skateboarding and good schools and all that. So I'd say 
a little bit, okay. I guess, yeah. but I don't, I don't really know how to answer that question. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't know. All right. <laughs> I, I don't think it, it didn't influence it. Okay. Like I remember um, in in elementary school, we did a we did a project where where all the kids got these tiles, uh -huh. and you got to use like some sort of paint to to draw out whatever you want on the tile. Of course, my mom was there, and yeah. she pretty much did my <laughs> with me, you know. Because at the time, I liked to draw this like this like I called him the cool dude, uh -huh. and it was like sunglasses, yeah, with like a face, a, an L nose, a smile, and then like spiky hair. Okay, because yeah. that was the era of like the bleach tips. Oh, you know, where you, like, sure. Spike your hair with the, yeah. the Mark McGrath sugar. Yeah, ray, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's kind of what I was going for with the, with the drawing, um, mm -hmm. and did that, and that was you know on the wall. It's funny I'm remembering all this now, but I remember, you know, then going to school and going back there later yeah. after when I was in middle school, back to the elementary school, because my little brother was there, and you'd see all those tiles along the yeah. wall, the open face school, and be like, and then walk down and be like, oh, I know mine is like somewhere in here. It's like the 20th, second one in or something, yeah. you know, and then seeing it and kind of back to that initial thing, said like that, that mark of permanence. Yeah. And you're sure. like, okay, cool. Like, yeah. you, you put that there. Yeah. Um, so. Yes and no. Okay. Yeah. Okay. My my mom definitely with all the projects and oh, sure. and her being so artistic. She yeah. she did like window displays for a mm -hmm. while. Okay. Where at, at the the st uh, storefront, you know yeah. what you see, um, is always supposed to be like pretty to captivate you to go oh, on yeah. to go into the short store to shop. Yeah. And uh, I remember being a kid sometimes after we'd be like you know getting our school or school clothes or whatever yeah. like. And her like standing in front of a store that like I definitely didn't want to go into because it was yeah. probably like you know furniture <laughs> or like not something that was interesting uh -huh. to me. But her like geeking out on like oh so that's how they were hanging the mannequins there uh, and like like then and then like, yeah. pointed out to me like look yeah. see it's like with fishing lines so you don't see it and yeah. it looks like it's floating or yeah. little stuff like that and that kind of I think influenced me into the whole like dissection pro yeah. process of like, okay, this is what I want to achieve. Okay. What steps is it going to take sure. in my process of the project to get there? Okay. okay. It's almost like curating your mom as you're doing. I mean, if you really, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, totally. Displays. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, that's a nice thing to see also when you're, when you're younger. Okay. All right, so all right. In my book, I got these starred questions. Please. Who these are? You know, like the you know the YG and then the Mob Deep one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were published in Rolling Stone. Yes, I was. My goodness. Yes. All right. So how did that happen? How did that come about? Same same kind of era, doing the, the live art and stuff. Yeah. I had a um, a peer from San Diego State. Mm -hmm. uh, her name's Sarah Katsky. Shout out. She moved out to New York. And she yeah. got in with Rolling Stone. I don't know exactly what she was doing yeah. with them, but uh, she hit me up like, just hey, I've been seeing your your art shows, this and that. Mm -hmm. You know, we're we're based out of New York, but we're doing a show at Sound Nightclub mm -hmm. in um, in Hollywood. I think it was like a pre or post Coachella party. Okay, and then um, they were having like a, a Dos Equis and. Holy Ghost, the band was performing. Okay. It was like a private, like red, red mm -hmm. carpet thing. Okay. Do you want to be a part of it? Yeah, <laughs> I was like, yes, yeah, let's go. Uh -huh. you yeah, know? yeah, man. So yeah, I loaded up That's my dope. truck from San Diego okay. and like drove up and I called like all my friends mm -hmm. that I did have that had moved to LA or were in LA and I was like, mm -hmm. hey, I don't know if you can get in, but like we're gonna find a way. Yeah, you know? it's a Rolling Stones to uh -huh. party. Uh, I think everyone got in too. Um, but yeah, I painted a, a, a big piece that night, a four by six okay. of the, yeah, that's I, I basically did my rendition of the album artwork for Holy mm. Ghost at the time. Okay. I think it was like a, uh, like a man and a woman like making out okay. and then like their heads like, like morphed into wolves or something okay. like, like going, it was something like real trippy like that. Um, so kind of like bit the album art, which is, I don't know if that's the best move, sure. okay. but like I was young and just yeah. like, it was whatever. So I did, did that. It was different though. You know, it was my own, own thing and yeah. I'm, I'm painting it live. It was, it was a great event. Um, oh, they, uh, Yahtzee, oh, right on top. Oh, man. they ended up doing a write up in the magazine nice. about that um, that event yeah. and, and what went down and everything. And it was really cool to be featured in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's awesome, man. Yeah, I was, 
You've done a lot of cool stuff, man. I've met a lot been, of cool I've been people. really, really fortunate to do yeah. that. And I think a lot of that is there's a lot of cool stuff that I've done and we've got to chat about that. And there's a yeah. lot of stuff that I've, you know, participated in that maybe weren't my best days yeah. or, or the best shows or whatever. But I'm a firm believer that like it all, you know, like adds oh, yeah. up and yeah. stacks up. So yeah. it's like sometimes it's it's just baby steps mm -hmm. you know to mm -hmm. to do what you want get get where you want to go yeah um but yeah the rolling stones thing was cool um i i don't think i got a whole lot of like mm. i thought it was going to be a a, bi a bigger like sure. you know wind it wind at my back after yeah. that happened it was definitely like a huge confidence boost oh yeah um but yeah no i mean i'm, I'm great i'm yeah. grateful for it yeah absolutely yeah man that's that's awesome <laughs> okay uh other than, let's say your family, right? Who mm -hmm. would you say your biggest influences are, uh, as as it you know, in terms of creating art or artwork? In terms of creating art and artwork, my biggest influences. So, I recently like sat down and was like, what do I want to do with mm -hmm. my paintings? Because I feel like I was kind of getting like, like stagnant. Sure. I guess you'd say. So I, I, you know, I, there's a lot of different people I follow and I look at their artwork for yeah. inspiration and stuff like that. Uh -huh. And I think for a, long, for a long time in my career it was sort of like, I was mimicking, you know, what I thought was cool or, okay. or what I wanted to do. But now I'm really trying to, you know, figure out what I want to do okay. and what's going to make, you know, me feel good. Sure. Um, and a lot of that is getting like, someone's idea for a painting that they want and then mm. i get to put my okay you know finesse yeah on yeah. it okay all right so then uh when it comes to commissions then do you usually have the free reign to you know put your stamp on it you know like now it's say? getting yeah the reins are a lot looser now, okay i'd say because i think people are finally like trusting me and okay. coming to me for for a, a reason whereas in the past it was a lot more like trying to like, you know, walk the line and yeah. create the book report to please everyone. Sure. And it, a lot of them turned out great, but sometimes I think when you're restrained like that, yeah. the art is kind of like, oh, you, yeah. know, you know, bottlenecked up, yeah. up a lot. Uh -huh. But for influence, like, I, I find a lot of influence in everyday life, okay. kind of things that you don't think would inspire you mm -hmm. or things that kind of give me an idea. Like if I'm driving to the store, and I might see, you know, an old beat up like shop that mm -hmm. is, you know, out of out of business and for lease. But maybe on the door, there's something that was like, you know, mm -hmm. hand painted there for a business yeah. like 10, 15 years ago. And it's like some cool logo or it's it's a character and it's it's a little wonkier. It's not yeah. the best rendition, but like the test of time and like the patina on it has yeah. kind of like made it a piece of art in itself and something yeah. like that might give me an idea like, oh, I want to repaint mm -hmm. my interpretation of that. And, okay. you know, that turns into something else. Yeah. Okay. You know, or going to the beach and like seeing something beautiful sure. and being like, cool, I'm going to, I'm going to paint this, but not in such a like realistic manner of what I see here. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe the, the piece can have those same elements or components yeah. to it, but with a little more feeling mm -hmm. or like flow of how it makes me feel. Okay. Okay. So then would you say that your inspiration comes more from just living life, right? Like living life. life. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Nothing. And then, and then seeing like art that grabs me, whether it's like purposeful art, like sure. somebody's tattoos uh -huh. that they purposely put on them and you're like, oh, that's really cool. And like, you know, you're drawn into it mm -hmm. or a mural that you see somewhere and you're like, oh, wow, that's amazing. Or something that, you know, makes you think like, how could I make this yeah. art? You know, okay. I go on like a surfing trip with my brother every year down to Scorpion Bay in Mexico. Okay. And for a while we're, we drive through the desert and it's just like these dunes of, you know, nothingness. Yeah. And then there's cactuses that are just so tall yeah. that you feel like so small. Uh -huh. And, you know, sometimes I see that and I'm like, oh, that'd be like a really cool yeah. you know, painting concept. Obviously yeah. when I paint it, it's not going to look like sure. it does there, yeah. but it'll be my interpretation of that and like maybe how that made me feel. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. But, but I want to go into more of a like kind of direction with my pieces still like bright and the washed out color backgrounds. Yeah. Like I like doing like the real abstracty yeah. stuff and then something more 
you know, concrete that you could really like grasp just at first glance yeah. of what it is on the forefront, but be more mindful with what I'm trying to put out there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, yeah, I mean, Whereas in the past, I was just kind of like just painting stuff sure. that I thought was cool yeah. or would work. Yeah. It's maturing now. It's maturing, I guess. Yeah. yeah, is a good way, okay. good way to say it. And then just having a lot more intention with each piece. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Oh, yeah, it's a great answer. All right. Okay. Um, do you, with commissions yes. coming in, people asking you to paint stuff, do you have the time to just work on stuff that you want to work on? Like like pieces that uh, that you're you're hoping to sell, you know, not some someone giving you direction to make a piece. Yeah, it's weird. I feel like with my painting, and it's kind of always been like this, I'm either like so in love with it yeah. that I'm like painting everything at once. Yeah. Or if I get into that bad dark space, yeah and you're not painting, like I'm not doing anything. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not working on the commission, I'm not working on sure. you know, my own stuff. So oftentimes when I'm working on a commission, you know, first it's exciting yeah. and you're getting this progress and it's, it's all fun. Mm -hmm. Then I usually get to that point where I'm like, oh man, this yeah. is like a lot, I'm in over my head, I don't know if I wanna work yeah. on this right now. Yeah. So I'll go work on something else. Oh, okay. And then that will like, you know, light that fire. Yeah for this new thing that I'm so excited oh, for. Yeah. So then I'm working on that. Uh -huh. But then, you know, Father Time is like, hey, homie, like <laughs> your <finish> commission <laughs> is yeah. not painting itself. Yeah. But that little break was kind of like, okay, cool. Well, actually this needs to dry. I'm kind of sick of working on this right now and overlooking that. Yeah. This commission is exciting again. Yeah. And yeah. then I, you know, jump back in. And then as I'm working on that, you're so anxious to get to the other one. Yeah. And it's like this art, like infectious uh -huh. to itself. And I think once you start getting that momentum, uh -huh. that's when it just like snowballs. And yeah. then like the phone rings are like, hey, like, can you do a mural? Yeah. Sweet, now I got all this stuff I yeah. want to paint. Okay. So, Do you like it that way, just being so busy all the time? Like, No, I mean, I, I go pretty crazy and neurotic. Like, yeah. I, I kind of don't hold stress as best, I, I guess, as you you should. Like, I've sure. been trying to get into meditation and, you know, my own personal practice with that, which is great. But, yes, I mean, I, I like being busy. Yeah. Sometimes I get overwhelmed, but I think it's, like, that's a good problem to have. Yeah, oh, absolutely. You know, it's yeah. a good problem to have because yeah. when, when I'm not, then you're like, man, I wish I had something to paint. Sure. And sometimes it's hard to get that that motivation or that inspiration just to like, just to start. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I like to tell people, they're like, oh, I don't know what to paint or I don't know what to do or where to start or I don't have any ideas. Yeah. So, you know, my best advice would be like, you know, set up your easel or get your paints out and just like, just start mixing something, Yeah, you know? Yeah. Cause if you just get that brush out and like dip some paint and then your canvas is sitting there, yeah. like even if you throw something on, you don't even know what you're doing. Next thing you know, you're gonna have a mark. Yeah. And then yeah. you're gonna see something there and then that will lead to something yeah. else. Or yeah. that day you'll go out and you'll see something and get inspired and you'll be like, that's what I'm gonna do for the piece. Yeah. yeah. So it's more just like acting, acting on it. And then even really like trying to think about what you're gonna do and try to accomplish. Uh -huh. So now, like when I am working on projects, it's it's more just like, just don't fight the battle of not even mm -hmm. working. Like just sure. just like just steady steady fuel, steady steam ahead. Yeah, yeah. You know, like if you just keep working. Yeah. Even if you don't necessarily think it's like adding up, like you're still like further off than you were ten seconds before sure. or yesterday. Yeah. And, and then it all adds up. Yeah. Okay. Because you know, there's a lot of times in my in my pieces where I'm just like, man, this is like not looking good, or yeah. this isn't like how I was planning it to like be right yeah. now, or I thought yeah. I'd be way further along. Uh huh. And you know, next thing you know, it, it all kind of gets buttoned up, and you're like, well, it took all that sure. BS to yeah. get here to the, mm. to the finish line. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, that's awesome. All right. So, how do you know when a piece is finished? How do you know when it? I, I get like an aha moment. Put it down. Oh, okay. I get like an aha oh. moment. Um. I usually have asked my wife like 20 or 30 times by then. <laughs> she's, so she's yeah. ready for it to be done too. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Ashley. I put her through the ringer so yeah. much with my pieces. Uh -huh. like, um, but yeah, I usually have like an aha moment because I, yeah. I know, you know, what I want and where it is. And then once, once I can really like look through it and I go through it with like a fine tooth comb, yeah. like, 
Cause I'm, I'm crazy, dude. Like I'll, yeah. I'll get out like the smallest brush to like, you know, yeah. like, it's like, it's like sure. the, the lines are straight, but the canvas like might have some porous pixelation. Yeah. Oh, so like, okay. I'll like, I'll fix that stuff. Yeah. Not for everything, but certain things. Cause oh, sure. like I, my eye sees it and certain people are always like, dude, I wouldn't have even known to look at that yeah. if you didn't point you that out. It. But like, yeah. I see it and I think it's just yeah. from so much time being in, in front of this stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I basically go through it with like a fine, fine tooth comb and, and uh, when I can't figure out anything else that I want to detail, yeah. or I don't think it needs any more, okay. then I'll, it's like stamp of approval and I'll figure out where to sign it. Okay. And that's it then? You never go back? And then that's it. Once you've signed it and thought, oh, yeah. maybe I should. Yeah, yeah I definitely something. have in my career. I've sure. done that before. You know, and there's a lot of canvases I've like reworked. Okay. Just been like, I'm over this. Yeah. Kills it. And yeah. then I do something else. Uh -huh. Even some pieces that I probably shouldn't have. <laughs> but you know, that's just part of the, part of the game. Uh -huh. But yeah, that, I, I'd say that's it if that answers your question. Okay, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. One thing I want to know, because sure. you've, You've got to take time to paint the canvas. Paint. Yeah. You've got murals sometimes to work mm -hmm. on. You're married, you know, and painting, it take, it's not like, you know, you come in here one hour, you're done with the whole thing. Right. right. So I know you skate, you surf. Mm -hmm. Do you find, find that you don't have the time to do like all the things you want to kind of stay normal, just kind of get your head out of the art world for a while? Or how do you, I guess the better question is how do you manage your time with all of this going on, and do you have time to just kind of chill and you know do the things that you want to do without pertaining to art? Yeah, so that's a that's a great question. Um, I I think now, and I want to answer all of it. I've been trying to, when I paint, try to get into like a very intentional, almost like a meditative state if yeah. I can. If it's yeah. something that like doesn't need a lot of, you know, like direct focus, but more just like, you know, mm -hmm. articulation of like, oh, I'm just filling all this red sure. today, you know, so I can uh -huh. kind of just get, you know, mindless in that. And for me, if I can achieve that and get into that, that mm -hmm. Zen state, you know, yeah. that's great. And it's like a nice, nice check out. Um, more recently, I've, I've kind of changed my, my lifestyle and my, you know, stacking habits through the day okay. to try to, you know, become an early person okay. and then yeah. get in front of the canvas and get, just get some, like I said, get something done, you know, yeah. maybe not even like know what I'm doing, but get those paints out and like make yeah. some sort of mark on it. Cause the next thing you know, like, all right, that whole section is, sure. you yeah. know, uh -huh. check, check off and complete. Usually when I hit a, like a wall, Cause I get to a, I get to a point where I, I can't look at something anymore because yeah. Oh, yeah. if I'm forcing it or if I'm, you know, not present in it, it's, uh, it's for me, I don't get the best results yeah. and I can tell, yeah I can uh -huh. tell with the, with the pieces. So that's when I will go skate or surf uh, okay, and sure. kind of like, or do something that I want to do for myself to yeah. basically like go blow off my steam okay and then I can come back to it with fresh eyes. Okay and then reapproach. Okay. Yeah. Cuz sometimes like I'll do something and I, and it'll be great. I got a great bunch of work done, but oh. I'm just frustrated and tired cuz I've been, you know, working oh, on this sure. stuff. Yeah. That I'm maybe not feeling good. Yeah. I'll leave, let's go do whatever I need to do, and then come back and I'm feeling good all of a sudden. I've kind okay. of forgot about it and I'll go, "Hey man, you know that that doesn't look half bad. <laughs> yeah. I'm just yeah. like, uh, like what, what were you even worried about? You take some time to kind of yeah, take some time to compress a little bit. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, I definitely say, you know, time is, time is always too short. Yeah. You, know, yeah. you, you never have as much time as you never like, enough time, but you know, just get busy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You, gotta, you gotta get busy. Mm -hmm. So how has your wife, because, I mean, she's seen all this. I, I yeah. met her at the Peace Unit show. You met her, That's yeah, right. yeah. You met Ashley Very at the Peace nice. Unit show. Yeah. yeah. Um, Ashley's a badass. She's, yeah. She's, like, helped my art career. Okay. And my paintings um, immensely. Yeah. Yeah. She's That's awesome. uh, She's super professional and, like, has a good, you know, business kind of mindset uh -huh. on, on her shoulders. Whereas I've always been, like, creative. And I kind of uh -huh. just, like ran amok with my art for a while sure. and was like in the mix, but not like, I guess, closing or like mm -hmm. buttoning stuff up where it needed to be. Just yeah. kind of like just out there mm -hmm. where she's helped like take all the chaos and then like, you know, this is it. Like, so now you can like, yeah. you know, just keep moving it forward. Yeah. Um, 
she's also really helpful on murals sometimes okay. if I have like a big job. Yeah. Um, only if it's like we can make it like a half work, half yeah. Uh, trip. <laughs> sure. She'll come and then we'll, okay. we'll paint oh, nice. together, which yeah. is nice. She 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 gets down, um, and she's she's got a good eye for um, color palette. Oh, okay, good. Oh, that's awesome. So it's perfect. So she's a, she's actually helped me kind of even like reapproach some stuff now mm -hmm. where I'll be like, all right, this is what I'm going to do with this, this, and this, and I'm going to do this color orange. Yeah. And she'll be like, okay, I like the idea of orange, but like. If you're gonna do it orange, you need to do it like a really like custardy orange oh, or something. Okay. Yeah, and then yeah. I'll be like, really? And I'll like, do a, maybe a mock up or something. Sure. Like, All right, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> hey, you're you know, right. Yeah. So, yeah, she's, she's yeah. solid in regards to all that. That's awesome, man. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic to have a partner like that, man. That's, yeah, I'm super, super lucky. That's beautiful. Okay. But I feel like there was a question you asked either about my, my pieces or my process that yeah, I, didn't, sure. I didn't answer. Okay, yeah. W was it or? Um, I think you answered it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was talking about your sort of the process that you like when you when you were about to start a piece. Yes. Okay. You know what? Let me. Yeah, I didn't ask it this way. Do you already have the idea, like a concept, already mm -hmm. in your head, or have you ever just you know? get a canvas and that okay let me just kind of figure it out from here yes both oh, okay so like you can't see in the camera but that one behind you uh -huh. over there that was a total just like oh, yeah. you know spontaneous like yeah. just winging it did like, like the wash and then all the uh -huh. black on it over sure. now up. now my process for most pieces is kind of like a mixture like of Backgrounds I'll do pretty much on my own. Okay. You know, I'll, I'll pick out the colors or whatnot. And then I will usually have some imagery that I like or that I've mocked up. Okay. Um, that I know I'm gonna like put on the piece. Mm -hmm. But after I, you know, get those first layers of the background or tone the canvas, then I kind of decide like, okay, where, how big I want it, how small I want it. And I okay. kind of do different like renditions almost digitally okay. or, you know, on my, Sometimes I'll put like butcher paper over the canvas oh, okay, and like sure. lightly sketch stuff out yeah. to see like how it feels because because shapes you know or a design or a character or whatever it may be will look one way on something but then once you put it in a box yeah. and frame it whether it's you know a, a rectangle or a triangle or whatever, all of a sudden it has a different feel yeah and then if you move that same thing you know to the right or to the left a little bit or up oh, or down sure, yeah. you know oh, then all of a sudden process. there's different balance and your eye like yeah. might look at it different and the, the breathing room is different so yeah to me almost the layout of my pieces takes the longest okay at least or the most in-depth like thought sure. and visualization and then it comes down to like the actual painting okay. of uh you yeah. know what's what yeah oh i like that the butcher paper yeah so you you're not you know nothing permanent on the canvas but you can kind of yeah figure out the direction of it or yeah you can you can yeah, you know move it around idea. or sketch yeah. or say oh what if i put this up here yeah. or up there you can print stuff out and kind of you know put it yeah. on you can use a projector too yeah, sure. kind of size stuff up yeah. bigger or smaller uh -huh. um, all sorts of stuff i do a lot of stuff sometimes with like tape too okay i'll like tape off Oh, okay, the, sure. you know the whole canvas yeah. and you know maybe you'll spray like uh -huh. one half green or whatever and then yeah. the other spot you're gonna you know hand paint or you'll do drips or something that'll go over it yeah. so you get these like weird layered effects okay awesome that, yeah that's that's a nice process man i dig that okay what's the biggest mural you've ever painted the biggest <laughs> mural i've ever done um I'd probably say the gator I did in Arizona. Oh, okay. oh sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one, uh, it's a big uh, see you later alligator yeah. uh, mural <laughs> down Camelback Boulevard in uh, in Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I met the chef Robert, really cool guy. Great okay. food there too, if you guys are okay. in the area. Um, and he he's just a funny, jolly, happy guy. Yeah. And I wanted to convey that ah, okay. uh, yeah. out to that neighborhood. Uh -huh. So my mission with that mural was what can I create that will be like, you know, happy and uplifting sure. that a five-year-old can see yeah. or like, you know, someone that's elderly can see and like everyone will just like kind of smile yeah. and feel good yeah. driving by or walking by. Uh -huh. So we did the fat gator uh -huh. um, and then it has like that, like kind of like retro, yeah. you know, flow down that's the wall. Fair. That wall's, I want to say like 150. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then oh, yeah. my wife and I went back. It's a big size. I want to say a year ago, and then we did the entire parking lot retaining walls oh, nice. 
with the black and white. Oh, sure. Like, yeah, like yeah. Sorry, right there. Yeah, yeah. I don't know the exact size, but those were probably the biggest. Okay. The biggest yeah. ones. That's awesome. Yeah. I've done a, ser a bunch of walls and in inside some gymnasiums too that are sure. pretty big too. But j those are those are more just like oh, a okay. lot of different walls. Sure. Sure. Are there any murals that maybe hold some kind of sentimental memory for you, or even one of your uh, canvas pieces that? Um, Maybe you didn't, okay, two questions, okay. About the murals, is there one that just means more to you, that, that you kind of remember fondly? And as far as the canvas pieces, is there a piece that you made that after you finish it was just kind of hard to let go? Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, not necessarily hard to let go. The, the canvas piece question first, there's a uh -huh. piece I had, um, I loved it. it is, it's called Sink to the Bottom with You. And it's like a pirate ship, like kind of just like rusted out and all just like stuck at the bottom of the ocean. Uh -huh. Kind of abstract though, like, but it is a ship. And then just this like wash of, of colors. And I just, I just think it looked so good. Yeah. Uh, and I sold it at an art show. Oh yeah. I think I was like short on rent that oh, month sure. or something. And, it's like, <laughs> and, and like, I spit out the price of what I wanted for it. Yeah didn't think that the girl would like yeah. go for it and yeah. she like didn't flinch she was right. like done <laughs> okay and so i was like, like oh dang I, just, I need the dough but didn't want to sell it yeah yeah man. so that's like that's like the one that got away okay um, yeah it's weird because i like thought about trying to like maybe buy that one back oh, really? or something <laughs> but like i just i never acted on it yet sure. yeah uh so that one is uh pretty meaningful um i'd say the first like drip wall that I no. did for uh, Fit Athletic Club is like my most meaningful mural right now yeah. because that's when I feel like I was like, all right, cool. I'm like really doing this. Yeah. It was the first project that I'd been on where I had some templates all mocked up okay. through the whole corporate team and stuff where like it was approved and checked yeah. off and we yeah. got the green light, we're painting that. Yeah. And it was, for lack of better words, just kind of cookie cutter. Yeah. Like okay. I wasn't like, let's go yeah. I'm pumped about it sure and while i was in there with the meeting um with the my point of contact jordan yeah i kind of was like just showing him some stuff on my ipad that i was working yeah. on and he was like oh hell no that is what we're doing oh, no and way. he's like he's like i'm just gonna push this the higher ups we're gonna get this approved and i was yeah. like for real because like if you're down to do that for the mural, like yeah that would be like my dream yeah you uh -huh. know and so he did and he's a boss for that thank you jordan pushed it to the top yeah and it spiraled into us doing like six more walls wow. like that yeah. like with the drips. And then okay. that led to the drip boards that you were talking about yeah. earlier. And it kind of helped just like push this whole like side, side kind of idea I had sure. of like what I really wanted to do. Yeah. And then um, it created great art yeah. because I think I was, you know, passionate about it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's gotta be, I mean, fantastic feeling to see like the, not the okay corporate sort of you know mm -hmm. like you said cookie cutter thing they want yeah to have a, lot your people, original a lot of people like you know they want want something and, and it's great and it gets the job done sure. but you know sometimes you just need a little extra yeah. extra yeah. something and then uh -huh. th those were um those were like kind of rewarding because i i told myself that i was only going to use spray spray cans okay for those jobs and that really was like a challenge to myself sure. but I did it and that was kind of like a boost of confidence yeah, to start yeah. uh, incorporating that into my, you know, mediums mm -hmm. and um, yeah. murals more often now. Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome, man. So that's that, fantastic. Six more walls after that first one. That's, I don't know if it was six total. But that's still. Was, yeah, it was, for the it was like a room. boxing room and the spin room and then the downstairs yeah. main room. All in yeah. the same facility? Yeah, it was like three facilities. stories, oh, okay. different, uh, yeah. different tiers. Yeah, that's nice, man. And that led to their, they opened another one in, um, in Miramar, San Diego. Sure. And that one was cool because th then they kind of gave me more free reign. They knew okay. what they wanted. Yeah. But we did like a Welltopia, like health and wellness. Okay. It was all like foliage and plants and sure. stuff. But I did it kind of abstract um, with different different color palettes yeah. that, that all complemented each other. So it was very bright, but kind of like what I was talking about earlier, very muted. Okay. So like colors and, and toned down. It just it just felt real good and chill in there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, those those were actually my biggest. Um, not just like like spans of buildings, but just like one wall at a time. Sure. Like those were like, I think like 26 by like 16. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Fat, and they were yeah. on a lift. Yeah. So that was fun. Oh, that's nice, do the Do the boom lift. Yeah, and yeah. The hard hat and uh -huh. stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I think I saw a picture of that yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, I do have a, the, uh, 
the Bob Marley sort of painting. Yeah, yeah. Is that still there? The no, no, that, that got painted over like oh. like <laughs> two weeks after the party. <laughs> San Diego State was like, hell no, that. <laughs> yeah. not staying okay. <laughs> I was like, that would be cool yeah. to go back and do that. All right. Yeah, that that was cool. Mm. Okay. All right, these are just a few questions I like to ask the artist before we go. Nothing, nothing too serious. Okay. Um, if you weren't an artist yeah. full time, what do you think you'd be doing instead of that? If I wasn't an artist full time, what would I be doing? Um, I would love to like give back to kids that are like troubled with like yeah. substance abuse sure. or um, you know just like misled. Um, yeah. So I, I feel like I would kind of put some efforts into that. I'd also maybe even like to start doing that a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I worked in like the bar and restaurant industry for a yeah. long time and I was really good at it, uh -huh. but it, it kind of held me back in the sense where like art was always like uh -huh. the side thing that uh, I was passionate about and sure. wanted to do full time, yeah, but I was afraid. Yeah. Um, when I took the, like the risk and was like, you got to go yeah. you know, full in the deep end. Yeah, that's yeah. when, that's when it kind of started really working. So yeah, that's, that's a really good question. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'd, I'd like to do something to give back, but I, I really feel like art's just kind of my purpose. Yeah, so that's, that's, what, right. I, that's yeah. what I need to be doing. Okay. Putting my energy awesome. into. Awesome. In the beginning stages? I, sell, I do sell a lot of cars for my friends though. Oh, do you? Yeah, <laughs> just like, just like slanging them for them on like offer up. Yeah, yeah. Like that. I don't know, I got like a niche for it. No, so like, sure. maybe I'd be like a used car salesman. <laughs> but like, no, I'm not really trying to do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like somehow it's like engaging and like I'm like decent at it. So yeah. I'm like, right, it's kind of, yeah, I'll do it. It's kind That's of fun. That's so funny. Okay, all right. <laughs> I like to talk to people. So yeah, it's like, yeah. You know, uh -huh. you can shoot the shit a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, shit, man. That's how, I mean, yeah. once we got to talking, that's how I mean, this right. whole eventually came together. Yeah. If I got better at skateboarding, I think it'd be sick to be like a, a skateboard uh, coach for little kids. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, my, uh, my youngest daughter, she's 10 now, she took um, skateboard lessons. Oh, and, there you uh, go. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was, yeah. The, uh, you, you know, you guys have that great park awesome. in uh, Burbank, the, the Valley Park. Is yeah, great. yeah, that's where it was. Yeah, there you go. yeah, uh huh. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's awesome. That, that's a great idea. Yeah. Kids love it. Yeah. I saw some little kids who were, uh, blew my mind, like seven, eight year olds who were ripping. Oh, it's insane, yeah. man. Yeah. It's dope. Yeah. 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 Actually, you know, after I did that, um, interview with uh with my man joe uh Avizia. was he the skateboarder yeah the skateboarder yeah, I love that yeah video. man yeah i uh i even thought about it for a second because i might i told my daughter who skateboards that you know he's a skateboarder she's like dang you should try it and we should all go i'm like all right i'll i'll give it a shot yeah you know yeah. i haven't i attempted to skateboard maybe in like 1997 when I, was like, <laughs> when I was like 11 years old but that was it but yeah man there's something about skate culture just in general mm -hmm. man that i don't know it's very attractive man and yeah man and like that feeling you get when you're riding it's just like it's like a yeah. high yeah you yeah just uh -huh. like want more yeah and i'm of the tony hawk pro skater one on playstation you know let's go era. so yeah that i mean Everyone I knew started skateboarding when that video game came oh, yeah. out. It was, yeah, it was insane. For sure. <laughs> okay. Um, if you could go anywhere in the world mm -hmm. to create, you know, just for, you know, like a month, let's say, um, to be inspired to, uh, you know, just maybe be in a different environment, yeah. where would you go? I would go somewhere like tropical. I don't want to necessarily say Hawaii because I've been there a few times, sure. but like one of my favorite things to do when I'm on vacation mm. or if I'm near the beach is snorkeling. Yeah, yeah, man. So yeah. my ideal situation yeah. would be if I could like wake up and paint yeah. in whatever studio I had or wake up and snorkel yeah. and then come back and paint yeah, either man. way. And then, you know, just go about my day and then get like a snorkel sesh later yeah, yeah. and then get back to the painting. Yeah. Cause to me that would be the ultimate checkout. Cause when I'm like snorkeling, I yeah. feel like I'm in a different world yeah, yeah, cause man. you're like underwater, yeah. but you're like breathing. So yeah. it's like your body's like, Oh, I don't know what's going on yeah. because this is like different. It's yeah. not normal. It's foreign, mm -hmm. but I've done it so much now that I'm accustomed to it. Yeah. And I love it. Uh -huh. And I, I love seeing the ocean yeah. um, creatures. I feel good when I'm at the yeah. ocean. I feel like calmer. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess ideal situation would just be like somewhere tropical yeah. where I could get in the water yeah. and paint. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, that's there's awesome. gotta There's got to be good food, though. That, oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, yeah, you have beautiful environment, yeah. shitty food. That's yeah. not going to work. Yeah, yeah. man. Oh, that, you know, I was uh, snorkeling in Hawaii. 
maybe like six or seven months ago. Oh, recently. The absolute best. The man. best. It really is. Yeah. yeah. So I was snorkeling. Giant sea turtle comes by. I'm like, yeah, oh, I got man. my I got my wife like into yeah. snorkeling out there, and uh -huh. uh, just the sea turtles are captivating. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's insane. Yeah, mm -hmm. snorkeling really is. If you're like afraid of the water, I, I mean, you could still snorkel and stand up, but man, snorkel once in your life, people. You got to. It's the best. You got us. Yeah, that, that would be something if that answers your question. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a fantastic okay. answer. Yeah, I might. Should I, that's something I would do just because. Okay. Um, all right. Last question then. If you could give advice to mm -hmm. an up-and-coming artist, yes. um, any advice in the world, uh, what would you tell them? And also, is there any advice that you wish that you had gotten when you were first up-and-coming? Okay. Um, I would say just like keep your head down and work yeah you know because if if you're thinking about it or you want to do it and you're not doing it you're not doing it yeah but if you're yeah. thinking about it there's something there that's telling you to do it so once you do it you're going to feel better yeah about it and you're going to start creating the work it's going to stack up um i'd say take advantage of like every opportunity you can even if it's just like a small art show or you know your friend's friend that's throwing something but you can you know throw some pieces up because like i said before it it all kind of just yeah. just stacks up yeah. um i wouldn't necessarily be so concerned with what other people like think about you sure. or think about your art and i wish someone kind of pointed that out to yeah. me sooner because i think i was for a long time like just worried about if people even think I'm cool yeah, or if yeah. like my art's cool and yeah. like really to me that doesn't matter anymore. What matters is like I want someone to look at my piece and feel yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And I think if you're just creating, you know, from inside, you're gonna push that out yeah. onto canvas because it's like you're literally creating and like what's more beautiful than that you're taking yeah. something that's nothing yeah that's not there it's not in this world it yeah. doesn't even exist yeah just in and then head. you know with your yeah. fingertips grabbing a brush or a pencil or whatever yeah. you're literally birthing something yeah that like uh -huh. wasn't in this universe five seconds ago. yeah absolutely and then you can build on that and uh you know i try to almost like apply that into like my life now like yeah. live your life as as it's art yeah. and like in oh, and, like and kind of like yeah. you know everything with with an effort to stack up sure so david goggins said um, yeah i like that guy. you'll never find a hater that's better than you yeah yeah and that that quote resonated with me because yeah i think if somebody's ever like you know hating on you it's probably just because of like their own insecurities 100 oh, percent. yeah so you're good yeah like, absolutely like anyone that's that that thinks it's great is just gonna like be there in awe yeah. anyone that's hating on it is hating on it because they're just hating on themselves yeah so yeah i'd say just like keep your nose to the grindstone keep painting keep getting your stuff out there yeah. Yeah. do whatever shows you can and um you know you'll feel good about it awesome awesome bro Corey, such a pleasure for, thank you so thanks much thanks for the opportunity to do this uh before we go what's the best where's the best place for the people to reach you instagram uh, you can meet website? you can reach me on my website uh www.coryschnitzer.com or uh, via instagram at Corey schnitzer everything's uh just my first and last name awesome all right well thank you guys take care